Hi, welcome to Math Fun. Today, let's look at the nth rule of n when n reach infinity. So, what we are going to do here is we want to see whether we have these limits, digits. So, when n tends to infinity, and it is n to the power of the reciprocal of n. So that's also it is the uh, nth root. So how can we do it? We are going to do it in two different ways. And neither way requires a lot of knowledge from calculus. They are actually pretty straightforward and it's quite interesting as a matter of fact. So let's look at the first ways. Now obviously one equal to the nth rule of 1, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And this is definitely smaller than n, the nth rule of n. So we get the first part. Now you probably guess what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to tell you that the limit is 1. So in other words, we need to find something else. And then the limit is also 1, right? And we can use the squeeze theorem to say, hey, this limit is 1. So what is the next one we need to do? Well, let's look at in this way, OK? So the <coughs> n to the power of the reciprocal of 1. Now, we think about n, and we have a power of the reciprocal of n. Now, you may think about it in this way, is that n obviously equal to 1 times 1 times 1. How many of them dot dot dot? And then what? Oh, we probably can do a square root of n, for example, and times another square root of n, isn't it? Now, how many 1 we have here? We are going to have n minus 2 1, OK? And then, of course, the whole thing to the power of n minus 1. Now, this is a geometric means of all those numbers. The numbers, you have n minus 2 1 and then 2 the square root of n, right? So uh, you know that the geometric mean is smaller or equal to the arithmetic mean and only if all those numbers are the same, the two numbers will be the same. So this is smaller than arithmetic mean, that means we divide it by n, and you have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus dot 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 plus 1 and plus square root of n plus square root of n. Now, keep in mind here how many 1 you have. That many, okay? So that many 1. So that will equal to n minus 2 plus 2 square root of n, and then we divide it by n, isn't it? OK. So in other words, this one, as you can see here, this one is smaller than that one. And what is the limit of this number when n tends to infinity? Well, that's obviously equal to 1 minus n minus 2 plus 2 divided the square root of n. So when n tends to infinity, this is 0, this is 0. So yes, the limit of this one is 1. So that tells us that the limit of the nth rule of n is also 1, because according to the uh, squeeze theorem, this has to be true. Now, if you say, I do not know about what it, the, school's, the squeeze theorem is, well, let me tell you a little bit. I'm not going to prove it. just want to tell you that this is what it is and when to use it. So what is the squeeze theorem? You will have 
we see you, yeah? so you have a and b and and c and uh, when n is sufficiently large in other words we have a constant n and for every n bigger than or equal to n we have this what do we have this number is smaller or equal to this number and smaller or equal to that number and if this one has limit that one has limits not only that the two limits are the same so let's say limits when n tends to infinity a n equal to limit n tends to infinity c n and let's say we call the limit l then we would know the limit n tends to infinity b n is also l and that's exactly what we use just now so pretty simple and easy but rather interesting isn't it so now let's look at a different way of calculating the limits of the nth rule of n in the second method let's call the nth rule of n a n okay a n equal to uh, a to the power of reciprocal n and we are going to prove that when n is big enough this series is decreasing as a matter of fact okay so in other words we are trying to prove that uh, we can find a constant n when n bigger than n um, n to the power of reciprocal n bigger than n plus to the power of n plus one reciprocal so how can we do that well it's in fact not very difficult so we're going to start with one plus n minus one to the power of n now you know this one right the limits of this equation in fact go to e and e is a constant and the constant equal to 2.7128 etc so it's a pretty small number and we're going to use this fact and we're going to use it in this way we will say that 1 plus n minus 1 to the power of n in fact smaller than n when n is sufficiently large and that's obviously the case it's actually only 2.71 so it definitely had to be the case in fact it doesn't take a lot of n when n is 3 that is already true so from there what can we do then? well from here you probably realize that the first part is n and n plus 1 isn't it and that would be to the power of n and we and we want that we already know that it's smaller than n so we can take a square root of n now so that will give us n plus one minus n smaller than n to the power of reciprocal of n and then what? Well, that means n plus 1 smaller than n times n to the power of the reciprocal of n. And that equal to n. Now, this is 1. So, that is 1 plus the reciprocal of n. Now, that equal to what? That equal to n the power of n and n plus one okay now you look we're gonna take the n plus 
root on both sides so that will give you n plus 1 to the power of the reciprocal of n plus 1 and smaller than n to the power of the reciprocal of n exactly what we want out here of course i wrote it the opposite way so we know this series is decreasing monotonically and at the same time we also know this series definitely has a bound it's bound below because it's always bigger than one isn't it so it has a but lower bound at the same time is decreasing so that tell you it has a limit there's a theorem called the monotone conversion theorem tell you that if a series is monotone <coughs> decreasing and is bound below it definitely has a limit so this series has a limit there is a limit After we know that there is a limit, then we have to calculate the limit. So what we are going to do here, we are going to call the limit, let's call it A or whatever letter you want to do. So A equal to limit and tends to infinity and it is the nth rule of n. And let's do some calculation out here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the nth rule of n times the 2nth rule of 2n. Okay. And what do we get here? Well, what we get out here is that actually let's write the uh, the other way. It's easier to write that way, I guess. 2n okay now we are going to make and ship the the n together with the two n so we are going to do n n minus one minus so not n minus one uh, the reciprocal n minus the reciprocal of two n and what's going to have here though is we're going to have an to the power of the reciprocal of 2n right and we're going to combine with this one so we also have the 2n which the power also is the reciprocal of 2n and we can combine the two so this one will give you the reciprocal n to the power of the reciprocal of 2n isn't it isn't that right good and then times you go you will get n times 2n and what is the power well the power is the reciprocal of 2n but at the same time we actually want to make the two numbers the same so we're going to times n and because you times a reciprocal of n, then outside you need to have a power of n here. Okay. So for these ones, for these ones, well, this one actually let's write equal for one more step. This one is n to the power of n uh, reciprocal of n, n to the power of a half. In other words, square root inside here what we have here is we have a 2n square and the power of the reciprocal of 2n square and the whole thing power of n now we already know the the limits of this one exist so when n is big enough, however big it is, it is big enough, this one will tend to the limit, which is a. This one also tends to the limit, which is a, right? So that will give us a square equal to 
Now this one, the limits is a, so that is actually a square root of a times, this is also a. I know it's a lot bigger than that one, but that doesn't really matter, it's the limit. So this is a, and you have a power of n. So this is a to the power of n. So what kind of number can satisfy this equation? Well, and by the way, this n can be as big as you want, as a matter of fact. So that tells you a is either 0 or a is 1. But we already know, we already know uh, the difference is bigger than 1, isn't it? Okay, so that definitely, this is impossible. So that will leave us with only one option, the limits of the nth rule of n is 1. And that's the two way to calculate it. I hope you enjoyed it and like it. If you do, please like and subscribe to my video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.